Hello guys, this is Terry from Genki Gaming, and we are here with a quick Pokemon theory. After the recent Koro Koro, we're going to be talking about two Pokemon. We're going to be talking about Type Null and its evolution. So Valde, so Valde, or Valde, whatever you want to call it. We are first going to just talk about them as a Pokemon evolutionary line in general. They are very, very unique, being a synthetic Pokemon. One that was designed to basically rival Pokemon often spoken of in myths. And whenever I think of mythical Pokemon, I don't just think of the art of Arceus or uh, Yavalto or, uh, or just any sort of legendary in general. I think of stuff like Darkrai. Giratina, stuff that this thing would have to really work hard to rival as a normal type, but most people are making the comparison of it to Arceus, which brings me to our theory in and of itself, because it is supposed to rival all mythical Pokemon, at least from my perspective here. Because it just says those Pokemon often spoken of in mythology. I think that refers to mythical Pokemon in general. Which is kind of why I'm thinking that we're experiencing that this year of just getting random mythical Pokemon and legendaries. My theory in and of itself is really short, sweet, and to the point. What I'm thinking is that for Type Null slash Silvare or Sil Silvale, I don't know the official pronunciation, but for this Pokemon evolutionary chain, uh, humans could have come in contact with Arceus or one of his plates or her plates or its plates in general. And with this thought in mind, It'd be really simple for po for uh, people in the Pokemon world to get a DNA sample off of one of the plates, off of Arceus itself, if they did truly come in contact with Arceus or something that Arceus walked over, touched, or came in contact with. Because if they were able to even get the tiniest DNA sample... It could reflect why Type Null has the restraint on its head and why Silvari has that, I guess it's like a metallic plate kind of across its jawline, the upper part of it, with that little slot where the memories go. Because the major change here for uh, Silvare or Sil Valet compared to Type Null is the lighter collar, the white collar for its mane and for the top of its head. But that was truly covered up by the mask of Type Null. And even the eyes are slightly... I was going to say slightly different, but they are in fact the same. Because when I zoom in on... Savale's eyes. I'm using the Pokemon website, by the way, because I'm being super lazy here. It's the same exact pupil, so the evolution didn't completely change it. It just altered its colors, kind of. It still has the same front board-like talons. It seems as if it still has the same purple plating on that back leg and the same tail essentially except for the tail is a little bit different the coloration is a tiny bit lighter and that's I think that's partially due to the interaction between the memories and Sovale and what I'm really thinking here is I'm going to read the Pokedex entries for both Type Null and Savale, and then we're going to talk about the memories here, just to go full circle. 
uh, for a type Gnaw, this Pokemon wears a mask and has been dubbed Gnaw, meaning nothing. The shape of its front and hind legs are clearly different. The reason is type Gnaw was constructed to synthesize the strengths of various Pokemon, enabling it to adapt to any situation. The mask fit to type Gnaw's head is a piece of equipment designed to control its latent powers. It's extremely heavy and serves to hinder Type Gnaw's agility. To complete a certain mission, there was need of a Pokemon powerful enough to rival those Pokemon often spoken of of legend. What we can get from this particular Pokedex entry is it was most likely engineered in a lab from the from this perspective it sounds like its dna is completely spliced from multiple pokemon base dna it's likely rcs and the rest of the dna it really feels like everything's aiming towards it being the starter final evolutions the the purple spots like the plating on the legs kind of leads me to think that that's not entirely so because I don't think anything in the Lydon evolutionary line has plates like that thus far we're not 100% confirming the final evolutions that were leaked I mean the board talents do seem similar to the talent that uh, Dark Tricks has, just a little bit, but they look more like something like Skarmory's talent, but a little bit spikier. And the tail, I've not seen a Pokemon with a tail similar to that as of yet, and it seems unlikely that anything in the Pop Leo line would have a tail like that unless there are multiple evolutions for the starters based on version differences. But with that even in mind we're going to jump to Savali's entry. When Type Null gains a partner it can trust it deliberately destroys the restraining device it wears. Once released from the heavy mass, the Pokemon speed increases substantially. Freed from the restraining effects of the mass, Savali's senses are heightened, and it reverts to its natural temperament. It has a wild nature, but it will obey a Pokemon, I mean a trainer that it trusts, and to protect that trainer from danger, it will put its own life on the line. Savali is said to have created, well, said to have been created to oppose a threat. By inserting exclusive items into the drive on Savali's head, it's RKS, RKS system can be activated, causing Savali's semantic cells to mutate and glow. And the RKS system enables it to change its type and its cells glow with different colored light depending upon the type. Savali's availability called the RKS system ability is one that no Pokemon has ever had. By having Savali hold items that correspond to each Pokemon type, it can change its own type. Multi-attack, which is a new move for Savali, takes the effect of whichever type item it's holding. So that's basically like Arceus and its plates. The RKS system. If you say that fast, it sounds like Arceus. Which infers that Pokemon is playing on the fact that I guess people are aiming towards the fact that it was created by the Aether Foundation, but what if it was created by someone else? I'm not saying that it's not a possibility that the Aether Foundation couldn't have made made Type Null slash Savale. What I'm saying is that there's a possibility that it could be a 
deeper process than what we're even thinking. Because recently Game Explain had their whole QA thing about how far they were actually able to play in the game. They were two hours in and they didn't even make it to the first trial captain. But with that in mind guys, it really feels like the game's going to be longer, that the story may be more complex. Who's to say that there's not a combined effort between Team Skull and the Aether Foundation to develop a Pokemon strong enough to take down Sogaleo and Lunala? Because that seems like it could be a use for Type Null slash Savale, which is kind of why Gladian just decided to take it, in my mind. Because it doesn't seem like he is too intent on really doing what either team really wants. A lot of people think he stole Type Null when he left the Aether Foundation. But we have no proof that he left the Aether Foundation or that he was a part of it. We just know that he's Team Skull's enforcer. What I'm thinking is... He could have came in contact with Type Null at some sort of facility and they could have had a semantic imprinting bonding experience thing that could have occurred. I know that's very vague, but at this point we really don't have any story details at all to really work off of for the development of that relationship. But let's move on to the memories, because this is the main focus, or the items that are going to be put into that little system slot on the side of Savali's head. What if those little held discs that we can see are actually parts from the plates that Arceus has? What if someone was able to chip away enough of it to create a small disc? And what if these discs actually have the memory of Arceus in it? With that being said, if these discs have like partial memories of Arceus itself in it, it could have been the it could have been something as simple as the memory of it creating a, a particular type or a particular attack. It's something more in depth that these memories are going to have a role to play, I believe. Which is why we kind of see Gladian kind of prevalently looking like he's swiping one in on the Coral Coral cover where there's that visual motion and he's holding three of those little discs. What if, besides the little memory disc things altering Savali's type, what if they temporarily give Savali a partial memory from Arceus's past? I know that's really a strange thought process to think about, but what if the synthetic man-made Pokemon designed to counter Arceus decides to side with it instead of doing what it was designed to do. And that's basically my theory all in all that the little disc things are actually memories of stuff that's occurred potentially in Arceus's past and that these particular memories are infused within the plates or within the material used to create these little discs that are kind of similar to the cartridges that Genosect uses. Both have the same baseline principles that it alters and attacks typing. But there's nothing more than this that I would like to discuss further here. It's already about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna let you guys go. I just wanted to make this, because I've been thinking about it a lot, at least with Type Null, about its construction. 
I've been Terry from Geeky Gaming. I want to tell you guys you're awesome, amazing viewers, and I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye-bye.